Hey there guys, Owen here from Edgewords Training, back again with another tutorial. This time we are going to be looking at a tool called Silk WebDriver, just over here. Now Silk WebDriver allows us to easily record and replay our tests. And we can also export our scripts as either Java code, um, C Sharp code, Python. Um, there are a variety of different languages that we could export to, but for today's um, tutorial, we are going to be using C Sharp. So let's dive straight in. Silk WebDriver, we can grab it from the Silk or Microfocus website. So microfocus.com, if you just search for Silk WebDriver um, in Google, you should be able to find it pretty simply. Okay, there we go. So on this web page, you can then go ahead and select this option to perform a free download and then just as usual, just run through your installation process. Next, 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 finish. Okay, and once you've got that installed, it should be available on your desktop like so. Now for this demonstration, I have also created a silk folder in my documents. So that's just where I'm going to place my um, test scripts. Okay, we'll just wait two seconds for this to load. Okay, now that um, Silk WebDriver has loaded, we can go ahead and record our new script. So we've got a couple of options. Obviously, we've not recorded a script yet. Um, so we need to go ahead and record a new script. Now, in order to actually do this, you will need to sign up to the Microfocus website. So you will need an account. Once you have got that, you can then go ahead and click record new script and then select your browser you wish to record against. You've got a few options here, but I think you can replay them back on um, more browsers than you can see here. So let's go ahead and record against Chrome. Here we have the URL that we will be navigating to. That is just our training website that we use for demonstrations. Okay, so we'll head over to that website. I'll click OK and then we'll give it a few seconds and eventually it should launch a browser for us ready to perform some actions on. Okay, so once Silk WebDriver has loaded, you can see that over here we've got the Silk WebDriver window. Um, and if you press the record button to start recording actions, you can also press the play button to replay your chosen actions. Um, however, immediately when you launch Silk WebDriver, you will be um, immediately placed into recording mode. So you can then just go ahead and start performing some actions. So let's just click on a few links. We go basic HTML and you can see it's going ahead and entering these actions in the actions table over here. So you can see there we've navigated to this URL. We've then clicked on this link, clicked on this one. Now let's try some other actions. So instead of a click, let's enter some text into this field. Now to do this, I can just simply right click and then we get this option. Okay, so this option, um, well, these options allow us to perform various different actions. So let's, yeah, right before we enter some keys, let's just clear the field just to make sure that the field is empty before we go ahead and enter some text in it. Okay, so I'll clear that. And you can see over here we've got that action now. So clear content of text input. And let's just go ahead and now enter some text. So I'll right click again, send keys. That is the action that I want. Okay, you can see there we've got a few others. Send keys is the one that will allow for key presses. So I'll just enter in here some text and click OK. And I'll do the same for this text area. So right click, we'll do a clear first. And then we'll just enter some more text, literally go and click OK and you can see again the actions have appeared over here now let's just do a submit okay so you can see that um, that text has all been added successfully into these forms so what I now want to do is actually perform some validation and you'll notice that if I right click and click on the drop down we've not got a validation option that's simply because it is here add verification this will actually verify um, whatever you have selected so if I say add verification 
we get a new window. This is the verification window. Okay, and here you can verify a certain attribute, a specific attribute, or rather a specific attribute value. Okay, so in this case, I just want to validate that the text attribute does read some text, which is what we've just entered. So I'll click the tick there and press OK. There you go, the verification has been recorded. Okay, and then eventually I'm just going to go back to form and then click on home. Okay, and then at that point I'm just going to stop the recording. Do you want to save the recorded actions? Yes. And if we just save them to a location that we can easily find, such as a silk folder on my documents. So I'll just call this my first recording. Okay, the extension will be .swd, that's silk web driver, and hit save. Okay, there we go, we've now got a recording available. And if I launch this now, it will simply use this browser as, um, as a baseline, so it will just run in that browser. Alternatively, I can close the browser and then go ahead and run it. And what it will do is actually create a new instance of the browser. So you can run this from an empty desktop or you can alternatively run it with a browser already open. Okay, and if I go ahead now and start clicking on more buttons, it will start adding these actions onto the end of the test script. But I just want to play this script back. So what I'm going to do is just down here in the um, Silk Web Driver window, just hit play. And we should see it execute all of those steps. There we go, perfect. And there is our pass and fail. You can see there all of the actions have a tick next to them. The red, cr the red cross is just because I'm hovering over and it. it's asking me if I want to delete that um, action. So the green text uh, ticks, you can see there all of our actions have passed. So let's go ahead and export this script now. Just up here, we have a few different options. So you can see here, this is how we would export the script in a different programming language. So you can see there, I can export it as a Java J unit, um, Java test ng. So you've got a bunch of the most common um, options. I'm just going to go for C sharp unit testing. Okay, and then clicking the hamburger menu over here and export. Okay, and I'm just going to place it in this location as well so I'll call this one again first recording okay but this time it is going to be a .cs file so that should save okay it shouldn't ask me if I want to overwrite anything there we go okay so I've now got my um, exported script so I can go ahead and close silk web driver now I know it executes successfully so let's just close that and I don't need to worry about saving the recorded actions again close that and close the browser okay now all I'm going to do is launch Visual Studio and what I'm going to do now is actually create a new project so I'm going to go to file new project okay and then clicking on the test section and this unit test project this is going to use the um, default test framework built into Visual Studio um, rather than using NUnit. Okay, so unit test project, I'll give it a name. Again, I'll just call it first recording and then press OK. There we go. Now, once that's um, successfully done, all I need to do now is just remove all of this code from here and then go ahead and look for my exported script. So inside documents, inside silk, here is my first recording.cs. And if I just do a right click and open with notepad, here is our script. If I just select all of that, copy it and then just paste it into Visual Studio. Okay, now that we have pasted our script into here, what we need to do is add some references. So going over to the references section in your Solution Explorer, 
if you do a right click and say manage NuGet packages okay, this will open up this window now all we need to do is look for a few libraries to add in so the first one I'm going to add in will be Selenium Selenium dot web driver okay, so th this will allow us to use the web driver uh, framework install that I'll also need selenium dot support okay and then for some cross browser testing I'm going to be adding in selenium web driver chrome driver when visual studio starts working again there we go okay selenium web driver chrome driver this one down here so web driver chrome driver not chrome web driver and I'll also add in this Firefox web driver okay so just those four extensions I've only added these two because I am going to be showing you how to perform some cross browser testing okay so selenium web driver selenium support and then a couple of browsers okay and once those have been added we should see a few of our squiggly underlines have now been removed okay so we've no longer got any problems with this so if I now build my solution we should see it appear over here in the test explorer now if your test explorer isn't visible um, so if it looks like this then all you need to do is go up to test down to Windows and then click test explorer and this should bring up the test explorer window so once you've built your solution you should see your recording which will be your class name and also your test method name so that is going to correspond with that notice if I change this to Owens test and then rebuild the solution there we go that's changed now to whatever this is okay and if I now execute this we should see that run successfully there we go that's run and it has passed okay so now I'm going to show you how to do some cross browser testing because with Silk Web Driver, if you wish to perform cross browser testing uh, within the, the tool itself, you will need to go pro. So you will need to pay for the professional edition. However, a little workaround of this is to simply add your um, other browsers driver to this project like I did um, in Manage NuGet Packages so I've added my Firefox driver and also my Chrome driver and once you've got that you can then test against either Firefox or Chrome in this case so to do this all I need to do is comment that line out there which will create the instance or instantiate the driver and then I need to perform my own instantiation so if I wish to test against Chrome I can just go driver equals new Chrome driver okay it may ask us if we wish to add the using statement simply hover over the error and say show potential fixes and then simply select using openqa.selenium.chrome that will then add the using statement in and we can then run our test so if I build solution we aren't going to see anything different happen here because we did run against Chrome originally but let's just make sure that it still executes successfully there we go it's running against Chrome and now because I also have my Firefox driver added to the project I can simply change Chrome to Firefox it will ask me again if I wish to add the using statement so doing the same process there adding the using openqa.selenium.firefox now if I build and run my project it should hopefully execute against Firefox there we go and that has now run successfully okay and that is it for the tutorial I hope this has helped you guys out if it has please leave a like on the video um, and until next time goodbye for now